Thank you, Ruth. Ladies and gentlemen, this morning so far we have uh, heard a lot about the lived experience. We now move to hearing from Dr Martha Kent. And Dr Martha Kent is a senior consultant psychiatrist working in private clinical practice in South Australia with a particular interest in women's mental health and BPD in particular. She's worked in the public system for many years, was appointed in 2010 as a member of the Federal Ministerial BPD Expert Reference Group and has chaired the South Australian Statewide Clinical Network PPD. I'm going to do it, Ruth. I'm going to get my B's and my P's and my D's all mixed up. <laughs> Working group. So just give me permission to do that, please. And Martha teaches psychiatry um, in uh, training around BPD. But a little thing you don't know about Martha is this lady's a surfer. She likes to go surfing on a longboard, particularly in good weather. Can we welcome Dr. Martha Kent? <laughs> Thank you, Jan and Paul, for inviting me to speak at this, the second national Borderline Personality Disorder Awareness Day. I am honoured. The topic of my talk is Borderline Personality Disorder, the Cinderella of Mental Health. Recently, uh, as part of the uh, state committee that I was uh, involved in, my colleagues and I conducted a survey of adult services for borderline personality disorder, public mental health service in this state. And we discovered that, in effect, there are no borderline personality disorder services throughout rural South Australia. And in metropolitan Adelaide, we found a flourishing culture of dialectical behaviour therapy, known as DBT, group therapy, in many areas, which is good but often with long waiting lists to attend, yet rarely the whole package of DBT therapy, which has been shown to be helpful in the research literature, which includes one-on-one -on -one DBT therapy over a significant period of time, associated with in-house supervision of therapists, DBT crisis intervention, as well as group therapy, and all of it as an integrated package this rarely occurs. So what is on offer for treatment of borderline personality in the adult public mental health service in South Australia is virtually nothing in the country, despite families and people with BPD uh, and service providers crying out for more services and training. And in metropolitan Adelaide, generally the most basic of BPD clinical services with one part of one sort of treatment only on offer, even though we know from research that many sorts of borderline talking therapies work equally well. DBT is not the only one. So what often happens in practice, in clinical practice, in our public mental health service is that a person who has BPD in crisis, is treated acutely in hospital, especially if they have harmed or have threatened to harm themselves or others. Follow-up outpatient case management is often seen as unsuitable for people with BPD and doesn't generally offer specific therapy in any case. There are in fact only a few skilled practicing BPD therapists in our public mental health service and skilled staff move or change their work locations or burn out or retire. So recently treated people with borderline personality in crisis in the public mental health service are put on a DBT group therapy waiting list and discharged into a clinical void into the community with the recommendation that they make an appointment with their GP and see if they can find a psychologist or a psychiatrist that they can work with. Both of these options are, however, problematic. Psychiatrists can be expensive, especially for the financially disadvantaged, have long waiting lists themselves, and practice mostly in city areas. People with borderline personality disorder cannot always attend 
uh, regular appointments in any case. Psychologists can also be expensive and not necessarily expert in treatment of borderline personality and are funded by Medicare only for a relatively small number of sessions, which is not sufficient for the needs of the person with significant borderline personality disorder who needs longer individual uh, therapy. GPs are usually not trained to provide treatment for borderline personality and may lack the time or nation in any case. So, often, the person with borderline personality uh, who is already vulnerable, in a very vulnerable state, following crisis and hospital intervention, feels and is isolated and uncared for in the community and seeks admission to hospital services once more, thus starting the revolving door process all over again and entrenching the urgency to engage in self-harm or risking their health or their survival through overdosing or suicide attempts. So why are the public mental health service, uh, services for borderline personality disorder so patchy and limited? Or like the curate's egg, good only in parts? Why is borderline personality disorder the Cinderella of mental health? There are lots of reasons, potentially, but historically, people with borderline personality were thought to be untreatable, except by psychoanalysis which treatment went on for years, was very intense, specialised, expensive. So generally it was thought that this diagnosis meant there was no recovery possible for someone who was diagnosed with BPD. And many clinicians, I think, still hold the view that uh, BPD is untreatable. And people with BPD, as we well know from some of the accounts we've heard today, I feel really discriminated against in the mental health services and especially compared to other forms of mental illness. Mental health clinicians actively seek to prevent their access to hospital or to mental health services. And why is there only DBT available in the South Australian adult public mental health service? I think some of the reasons are that DBT was and is seen as financially attractive by mental health managers because it has been shown to reduce the number of hospital admissions and bed days and hence costs for the service, particularly for this group of vulnerable and potentially expensive people who tend to repeatedly seek hospital admission. It was also attractive for clinicians because it was easily taught and practised and thus it became the prevailing therapeutic monoculture in Adelaide, despite the existence of four or five alternative, well-established, well-researched, well-described talking therapies for borderline personality, therapies such as mentalisation-based mentalization therapy or schema focus therapy or cognitive analytic therapy, to mention a few. It must also be said, however, that as we've heard today, people with BPD can be their own worst enemies they can plead for help or treatment one minute and shortly after reject it. They can harm themselves, as we know, repeatedly and scarily, despite every effort to help by families, friends and clinicians. They can sometimes become angry or abusive or aggressive, even or especially to those who are trying to help them. But they have good reasons for behaving this way in terms of their inner world as they struggle to manage intense, painful and rapidly changing emotions. There is often, not always, but there is often also a history of troubled relationships with early caregivers which they tend to repeat in their adult relationships over and over and they can feel desperate a lot of the time and needing to take control. But they alienate services and clinicians, families and friends in the process, and this frustration and alienation becomes entrenched in the health system as cynicism regarding people with borderline personality and results in exclusion and discrimination. 
Then there are the multiple fluctuating psychiatric illnesses which they experience on top of the borderline personality, which complicate their lives, their relationships, their presentations and their treatment. So it is certainly not easy to live with borderline personality disorder and clearly that's an understatement. As we've seen in the video today and as we've seen from the personal accounts, there's the emotional turmoil which changes from hour to hour and day to day, shifting between inner intense emotional pain which can feel bearable. Anger, rage, emptiness, numbness, sadness, despair, guilt, distress, to mention a few. And all of it seemingly random or hard to control or unmanageable. There is the repeated urge, especially when distressed or despairing or in emotional pain, to inflict disfiguring harm on themselves or to attempt suicide and we remember here today that suicide is disturbingly successful in this condition. Up to 10% of people with borderline personality disorder complete suicide. There's the not knowing who they are. There's the impulsiveness and the addictions. There are the multiple mental illnesses which come and go, as well as the borderline personality disorder. There can be memories of a troubled childhood often with the painful lingering sense of feeling unloved and misunderstood by parents or caregivers, which feeling often carries over into present day friendships and relationships and complicates them. There's the awareness too of troubled adult lives with histories of repeated victimizations in relationships or repeated rejections. There is the difficulty with unstable and turbulent relationships at work, at home, with friends, with lovers. There may be fits of anger and rage alternating with clinginess and neediness and often culminating in rejection and loneliness and financial problems. There's the painful awareness that people with BPD unwittingly seem to drive people away for which they often berate themselves bitterly, yet they cannot endure aloneness or abandonment. So as if this wasn't enough, on top of this, there is the struggle to find suitable therapy and a therapist who meets their needs is trained, affordable, accessible and available for the longer term. Yet there is plentiful evidence that specific treatments, talking therapies, have been shown to help to a significant degree and that a majority of people with BP can recover over the longer term. There was a prominent example of the lack of suitable services for severe borderline personality disorder in this state a few months ago. This case was highlighted in the media over a number of weeks in June of this year. My information regarding this case comes from the media and not private sources. It concerns a certain Jackie Davies. She has been described as suffering from extreme borderline personality disorder in the press. Due to the severity of her illness and alarmingly dangerous behaviours to both herself and to others, she had been restrained by being shackled to her bed in Yatala Prison Infirmary in the hospital for 20 hours of the day for a period of nine months, it was said, in order to keep her safe and to keep prison staff safe also. In Yatala Women's Prison, she was held in her cell 23 hours a day and handcuffed whenever she was let out, prompting the lodging of a formal complaint to the Australian Human Rights Commission. The public advocate of this state, Dr John Braley, described treatment as inhumane and recommended a more therapeutically based environment as conducive to her well-being. Initially, however, it was deemed that a mental health facility, in this case James Nash House, 
was not appropriate. Ultimately, though, she was transferred to that facility, but as a temporary measure, pending appropriate modifications to her prison cell. Now, clearly, this is a terribly complex and difficult case, and I'm not in full possession of all of the facts. There are clearly also not any ready-made solutions, and it's a tragic case, particularly to Jackie, but also to other people involved. But it highlights, amongst other issues, the lack of appropriate mental health facilities and services for people with BPD in this state and in this town, especially when multiple systems are involved. It also seems to indicate that some clinicians and mental health administrators maintain the attitude that patients or people with BPD are considered unsuitable candidates for treatment and care within the public mental health system. Moreover, for this case, a psychiatric expert in borderline personality disorder was brought from interstate, from Spectrum, I understand, in Victoria, to provide consultation and advice to the relevant local services. Now, this in itself must indicate the perceived lack of local sophisticated clinical expertise in the area of borderline personality disorder in this state and or the lack of expert coordinated systems around the BPD in South Australia to provide the needed level of care for people who ha have very severe um, elements of this condition. I think it also illustrates how deficiencies and gaps in the system of care can result in a worsening of borderline personality disorder and further behavioural complications in the person with severe BPD with potentially alarming consequences. In Jackie's case, her term of imprisonment has been significantly lengthened, I understand, as a consequence of her aggressive and dangerous behaviours. It was for just such severe and complex cases of BPD that the service spectrum was set up in Victoria, in Melbourne, in the mid-90s, and we are very fortunate to have representatives of Spectrum here today. This service is still going strong and has been very successful in offering treatment to people with significant borderline personality in the public mental health service countrywide across Victoria and in Melbourne. It offers a wide range of therapeutic approaches for people with borderline personality, consultation and support to clinicians in the mental health service, high levels of in-house supervision and support for the clinicians themselves in spectrum, high morale, teaching, research, and all of this on a modest but steady budget. It also offers limited inpatient care, which is strongly integrated within the public mental health community services. It attracts and retains motivated clinicians who are expert in borderline personality and it offers a wide range of approaches for treatment of the condition and support for families. It is thus an accessible and visible centre, a thriving centre for borderline personality disorder expertise and treatment in Victoria. So we know that many different talking therapies work for borderline personality disorder provided over some years. We know that people with borderline personality disorder need individual one-on-one -on -one talking therapy as well as a variety of other services. We know that people with BPD can recover. We believe that they require a choice of treatment to suit their individual needs. We know that not every mental health clinician is suited to work with borderline personality or wants to, and there is a risk of clinician burnout without sufficient support and supervision. We know there are some patchy services currently available in the public mental health service in this state, in Adelaide, but they offer only one type of very basic treatment 
and there remains a widespread culture of discrimination and exclusion within mental health and the health services at large against this condition. I believe we need an integrated, coordinated system of care for people with BPD in South Australia, our own version of Spectrum, if you like. The model is already up and running. It could readily be modified to suit South Australian conditions. If we go with a piecemeal approach, area by area, then we risk uncoordinated, inconsistent services and ultimately sustainable services. Because in the care of people with borderline personality, a critical mass of clinicians and participants is required and secure funding. Without these, the service rises and falls according to the enthusiasm, energy, charisma and commitment of individuals, people like Jan McMahon. Or it rises and falls in response to the fashions in mental health or to funding spurts, but it lacks an ongoing presence and effectiveness. Like Spectrum, we need committed annual funding to a visible, accessible service. At this service, people with borderline personality disorder and their families can seek help, feel welcome, feel understood, feel secure. Resources can be gathered together in one place and can be accessed readily by any who need to. At this centre, education programs for mental health and health workers can be developed and delivered across systems consistently in South Australia so that stigma and discrimination against borderline personality disorder can be reduced. Training in assessment processes and particularly therapy can be developed and delivered across Australia in a consistent and coordinated fashion and especially in rural areas where the need is so great. Multiple borderline specific treatments can be learnt and applied thus giving people with borderline personality disorder a choice of treatment to suit their needs. Local expertise can be built and accessed, such as complex issues and cases such as Jackie Davies, can be managed locally and in a timely fashion, thus minimising further serious complications and human rights abuses. At such a centre, linkages could be developed and maintained with other health services, including early childhood services for mothers with borderline personality disorder, CAMS, non-government uh, organisations, police, paramedics, uh, wherever people with borderline personality disorder um, have contact. I believe that only a borderline personality disorder centre of this sort in South Australia can provide the skilled, integrated, consistent and importantly sustainable approach to the care of people with borderline personality that is so badly needed in this state. Remember, this is a condition that has a suicide rate equivalent to that of the major mental illness, including schizophrenia and bipolar affective disorder. Let us create such a visible and accessible public mental health centre for borderline personality disorder in South Australia so that people here can get the treatment they need to recover from this devastating condition, both in the city and in the country. It's time the Cinderella of mental health was rescued. Thank you. Minister Butler, fabulous ideas there. Something to be thinking about. Um,